Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be doing some dual mapping and quad mapping. Uh, watch us get the ECU out of the car um, and how we installed our bespoke boards onto your um, ECUs. Stay tuned. So here you can see that we're applying some heat tape. This this will stop any heat that we apply to the board to remove the chip, penetrating the rest of the components on the board. We just apply the heat in a smooth linear fashion just to try and eat, like tease the, the chip off the board, not making sure we don't damage any tracks. Obviously that, that's not what we want. And yeah, the, the chip's quite hot now. So yeah, we need the tweezers to pick it up. Yeah, so we just put a little bit of flux down just to enable the solder to flow a bit better. So we apply some heat. And you can see the soldering is, is flowing a lot better with some flux. That will enable us to, to clean it with the wick. Right, so now we have to obviously have to take a backup of the data that's on the original chip on the ECU. This will enable us to, to always restore the ECU back to stock if needed. So, you know, if a customer wants to take this off and move to a different ECU, then we can do that. That's not our problem at all. Once that's all done, we can then uh, get a new chip, put a new chip on the board after we've done the binary magic on the PC, on the laptop, uh, install the new chip, write, write the data to it, uh, making sure that, you know, it's all contacted and, you know, etc. Here you can see where we're applying some solder paste. This this is easier than actually individually soldering them. Soldering them. So what we do is we, we lay a really really thin line line of solder paste, and then we apply heat. And as we apply the heat, it sucks into all of the metal components. Uh, we just when we make sure we put the chip back on, so it lines up. So each individual each 44 pin has to line up perfectly. Otherwise we get a no connection and a no boot situation on the board.
see now we just go through each each individual pin just to make sure that all of the solder is properly jointed making sure that you know it's a good connection and, and there's no dry joints So as you can see here we're just adding some wire so when we add the chip our, our bespoke board onto the top we we can just tap into it and make sure all the wire is correct and stuff like that so you can hear here i'm just adding a little bit more solder just to make sure we can get a good connection So here's our board. Um, what I'm doing now is just making, putting a bit of flux on each of the joins, and then we'll dab it, and make sure all of the solder is good. You can just see uh, we just you can zoom in if you like. Uh, you can just see each individual one is is just making sure there's enough enough solder there just to take the wire. Um, as you can see, these boards are have our logo on. We were the first to to, to, do, to do this. Um, there is other ways of doing this in in the ECU, however. After some extensive research, we found that that it just wasn't working and, and it was very unstable. So um, we decided to make a bespoke board instead of just using a resistor. And yeah, you know, it, it looks looks the part. It, it, it works. There's no issues with this setup at all. It, it just works. It's very very robust. So now we're just adding additional power for the board. So this is going to be the 12 volt feed uh, from the actual uh, plug in, but from the black plug, as well as the earth. So it will be earthed through the, the main wiring harness of the car, just so we don't get any interference when we're switching maps. You know, we found out this is the best way. You can take these feeds from the board internally. However, we prefer to, to take it direct from source because you know we don't get any noisy signals or anything like that so it really really is a better way of doing it
here we can you can see it's plugging in the tester so this is just one of our bench testers just to power up the ECU make sure all of the logical logic functions work right uh, so as you saw we've done everything ready to test on the car um, in terms of mapping this car has gone for the uh, quad map so it's got four individual maps which you can change at any any time any rpm you can even change it while it's on cruise control because the change is so quick um the ecu is like it, it doesn't um this one's set up to be uh an original map slightly tuned mapped no smoke and then the fourth one is like asbo mode so if you want all the smoke all the noise literally if you want to to be a hooligan that that, that one you can have on and off as you choose um to distinguish between the the, the maps the last couple of maps have different RPMs, so idle RPM, so you kind of know which which position you are in in terms of which map you're on, um, as you'll see in a second. So on this car, we've opted for the quad maps. So what that means is is that we can have four maps individually stored on one ECU. So we'll show you the different between the maps so you each map have an individual uh high idle or lower idle just to give you an idea of what sort of map level you're in you can tell by having the the two switches because this is four maps so you need two switches so yeah you activate them like that so i'll start it up so that's in everyday mode this is this, this is a powerful map on this car so that's everyday mode so this would be original so you know if you or lower than original depends if you want to give the car below standard power to someone that is you know a little bit that might crash it because it does happen um and then you've got the secondary map which brings the, the rpm up and then you've got the the fourth map so it brings as you can hear it brings all the rpm back up and yeah so just just like that and you can do that at any rpm you can even do that using our cruise control as well that we've we've developed 